I appreciate being given the opportunity to speak on Senate Bill 387. Uh, I've submitted testimony, and primarily what my testimony is about is uh, an article that was written on an uh, uh, amusement park, Cossey Amusement Park, that's, been, uh, that's in this town of Middlebury, which is the district I represent. I should say my name is Anthony DeMille. I represent the 71st District, which is uh, the town of Waterbury and uh, the city of Waterbury and the town of Middlebury. Um, but I, I submitted that, that article that was written by the Hartford Current so that you could uh, review it at your leisure. Um, it talks a lot about the impact that the minimum wage would have primarily on uh, uh, George Francis's business, uh, Cosby Amusement Park, that's been established here in the state of Connecticut for over 100 years. He employs a lot of teenagers um, in his business, so um, it's a dramatic impact um, that, that the minimum wage increase uh, has on his business. Uh, but I want to talk to you a, a little bit today about my experience. I'm a small business owner uh, in the city of Waterbury. Uh, I own and operate a restaurant called Paisano's for the past 15 years. I've been in business for myself for the past 30 years. Uh, and I've got to tell you, folks, since 2008, it's been extremely difficult. Um, the economy in this state, as we all know, is, um, is very difficult. We're, uh, as operators, uh, as small business owners, we're, we're trying to be as creative, creative as we can to provide the service to our customers. Um, by raising this minimum wage um, by 18%, I mean, we're looking at 75% increase this year and a 75% increase next year. That comes out to an 18% increase. Uh, I don't think there's any business in the state of Connecticut, small business, restaurant, that is doing or has increased their business by 18% over the last four years. By doing this, we're gonna, we're gonna, it's going to cost jobs. Let's not kid ourselves. Um, there's, there's only so much revenue that comes into any business. And we have fixed costs as business owners. Our mortgage is a fixed cost. Our CLMP bill is a fixed cost. Our insurance, our, our gas bill, and so on. The only thing that we really can control is our food costs in my business and labor. Um, we had, we've had to lay off people. Uh, since this recession has started, unfortunately. Um, my employees are doing more. They're, they're being asked to do more because um, we're, not, we're not doing the ticket count that we, that we used to do. And in order for them to, to be provided a job, um, you know, we're, we're having people host and bus, for an example, uh, to do double duty uh, on a slower nights. I think everybody out there is doing that. You, you need to do what you have to do to keep your doors open. Um, I know, you know, we all have different constituency, but, you know, and everybody is, is advocating for s someone different in, in this place. But, you know, each and every legislator here is about jobs. I mean, we've been talking about that for the last several sessions. How do we create jobs? How do we maintain jobs? Um, by even proposing this legislation, I've got to be honest with you, I, I think it, it just creates a negative effect when it comes to businesses in the state of Connecticut. Um, it, it tells people out there that we're not a business-friendly state because we're going after businesses again. Um, so, you know, I, I just hope that the committee can take into consideration. Uh, I'm just trying to explain to you my experience. Um, this is what I do for a living. Um, it will definitely cost jobs. I've talked to uh, my local IGA um, grocer. Uh, he, his staff is down since this recession started. And if we keep imposing these mandates on him, he's just going to have fewer and fewer employees um, to do the job. Um, that's just the reality of what's going on. So I know the very constituency you're trying to help uh, will be the very constituency that's going to be hurt by this bill. Uh, I thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you for coming. Are there any questions? The one question I do have, because you, you do have your own business and you are or could be directly affected by this, is if you have an employee now who say let's let's say he or she is earning ten dollars or ten fifty per hour and this bill were to get passed so now we have a minimum wage of say nine seventy five per hour what effect if any would that have on the person who's already making ten fifty could you address that sure you know minimum wage is an entry level um, position basically I mean you know you're basically teaching a person how to do everything within your business um, and if that person's good you bump them up you know I, I've been in business in a while for a while and, and 
Um, all of my employees have been with me for a while, so all of them are earning more than minimum wage. But it would definitely, that, that, that's a, a great question because what would happen is I would have to bump everybody up. Um, if I'm hiring someone that has no skill sets at all to do a job and I'm teaching that person and I'm paying them $9.75 an hour or $9 an hour and someone that's been there for a year and knows the job is making 10 I mean, there's no incentive for that person unless I bump their wage up, uh, which, you know, it just creates that domino effect and it costs more and more money for... Uh, for employers. Um, so, you know, I, I'd have to take a hard look at it and really hire only people that I need. Um, you know, even, uh, you know, in the summertime when the teenagers are available, uh, you know, there's a lot more catering and stuff going on and I tend to hire a lot of uh, high school kids. Um, I'm going to have to take a really good look at it and, um, you know, and, and probably not hire as many uh, as people as I would normally because, you know, there's a negative cost effect. Thanks for that answer, and I, I do appreciate you coming down to give us some insight. It's always helpful when we have somebody who actually owns their own business and can relate directly to the uh, proposals that we seek to make here. So uh, I look forward to discussing this further with you as we go along. Representative Emilio, I, I, I'm always in awe of people like yourself who are legitimate business owners, who are trying to make an honest living, who are trying to um, provide a service to customers, and who are trying to employ um, people in our society to help them better themselves. And I know you personally, and I know your business, and I, I, I know that you speak from the heart when you say that this will have the opposite effect than what is uh, intended here. Um, I also know personally, I have met George Francis, who you referenced from uh, Quasi Amusement Park in, in Middlebury. Um, he employs every summer and early fall many people uh, on a seasonal basis and he has indicated to me anecdotally that this will in under no uncertain terms this will reduce the number of employees that he's able to hire I know that you represent him uh, his business here in the General Assembly can you elaborate a little bit for the committee and for the public as to what Mr. Francis has told you how this would actually impact his ability to hire uh, employees this summer well, if you read, if you read uh, part of my, my testimony in the article that I'm referencing, um, Cossie is a 104-year-old amusement park in, this, in the state of Connecticut. Um, and we're referencing last year's hike, which would have been 50 cents. It would have costed uh, Cossie about $150,000 more annually a year for wages. Um, would have been a really devastating effect on his business. He, he uh, states in the article that... He had a water park that um, I believe it's open now, but it would have, it, he would have had to put that on hold because there was no way that his business uh, and the economy that we're in now can absorb that type of an increase. Um, you know, I, I did a little research. Uh, Employment Policy Institute, um, there's unemployment rate among teenagers is over around 25 percent, 24.3 percent right now. And um, I, have to, I have to believe that because a lot of the, a lot of the jobs that, um, that, that I used to give to teenage high school kids, college kids are now doing uh, because they can't find jobs, uh, you know, in, in other fields that they normally would take. So we're employing older um, teenagers than the normal high school kid uh, because, you know, because we can and, you know, and, 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 and they're a little older, but, you know, the unemployment rate among our teenagers is extremely high. And, you know, and every time you cost a business money, um, there's only one place that they can really, you know, make those cuts, like I said, in, in their buying power of the goods that they're, they're offering in, in an employment. Everything else is pretty much a fixed cost. So, you know, the more you're demanding them to pay out, someone's going to feel that, and unfortunately it's costing jobs. So in this very real example of a small, legitimate small business in the town of Middlebury, Connecticut, which is not some far away, distant place, but right here in the heart of Connecticut, the 50, if I'm understanding you correctly, the 50 cent increase that had been proposed last year would have resulted in $150,000 in increased wages, mm -hmm. presumably significantly less jobs than, than had been offered the previous season, and a dollar fifty increase then, it would stand to reason, would be an almost half a million dollar increase um, to this business, which could be the difference between staying open or staying closed or uh, or it's one of two things he either stays open or he stays closed one of three things lays off employees or prices go up dramatically is that fair to say absolutely and he states in the article that um, you know in this environment he couldn't possibly raise his prices because that would have a, a real big negative effect on his business 
He also mentions, uh, as Representative Smith alluded to before, that his returning employees, he would have to give them an incentive, a, a bump up, so that would cost them money. Um, so, you know, his capital, uh, his capital project was in jeopardy if that bill had passed last year. And I, you know, you know, the more money you're taking out of uh, out of the hands of operators to make those capital improvements or to invest into the into the economy won't be there. So there's a negative effect that goes on and on whenever we're doing something like this. It's just not the right time. The business environment hasn't hasn't gotten any better. Um, you know, we flatlined, but it hasn't gotten any better. It's a lot to think about. Thank you, Representative.